Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. Right here, I have two pots filled with sweet potato slips that have finally started to root. So they will be producing for me over the next couple months some really good tasting tubers. As you all know, if you've ever eaten sweet potatoes, they are amazing tasting, they're really healthy for you, and they're super easy to grow. In fact, you don't even need to go and buy the slips, which cost a lot of money. I'm gonna show you guys a cheap and quick easy way to be able to start these and get you growing some of the easiest crops to grow, especially if you live in the South, for a lot of food and really good tasting food. So I'm gonna bring you guys in, I'm gonna show you exactly how I got these slips started and then show you the planting process and kind of what to do to be able to get these going. Let's get to it. This is all you need. You need a tote, one of these like plastic tote type things. Something with a lid, by the way. You need do need the lid, and I'll get to that in a minute. You also need potting mix. And of course, you need the sweet potatoes. Now, by the way, you can buy these at the grocery store. Better to buy organic, but you can buy them at the grocery store, and they'll still root for you. You don't need to go and spend all this money on sweet potato slips. They're very expensive. Let's go ahead and start this. So I don't need this very deep. In fact, you want it pretty shallow. Now I might need a little bit more. I'm gonna see how high this gets. I'm gonna take the sweet potato, see how deep. No, it needs a little bit more. Now you're not trying to cover them completely. You just want enough dirt for them to be slightly buried. Now, before I put the sweet potato in, I'm gonna wet this down, make sure it's nice and moist. But you do not want this soaking wet. I'm gonna give it a little water, let that soak in. Kind of mix this up because fresh dirt is usually pretty hydrophobic. It means that it repels water. It's not afraid of water. It just repels water. Let's check this. And I'm squeezing pretty hard. No moisture is coming out. It's not dripping, but it's clumped together, holding the you know holding together when you squeeze it. So. This is perfect. So this is super simple, guys. You just take the sweet potato. If you already have any runners coming off of them or um, slips starting to grow, any green growth, then you'll want to place that up, not down. But this does not. So you want to bury it so it's about halfway covered with the soil, like so. And we'll do the same thing with this one on this side. And we're covering it halfway with the soil. Pretty much it guys and then you just wait it could take a couple weeks could take a couple months but you really don't want to be planting these out when there's any chance of cool weather I and mean, they can't even handle anything lower than like 50 degrees so they are a tropical plant um, and they're actually not potatoes so if you didn't know this they're actually the tuber of a morning glory uh, related type of plant so um, they're actually not related to potatoes so they don't have the same diseases that you have to worry about so you could plant them if you had extra soil that you once planted some potatoes in or tomatoes you could actually reuse that here i don't think those diseases would transfer over so you don't need a whole new bag of dirt in fact these slips you're not really looking for really high nutrient dirt you just need something to sprout those slips on. So there we go. You just want to place the lid on. You don't necessarily want to latch it. You just want the lid on top. Now, if it gets windy, I will come and latch maybe one side, um, but you want to keep that humidity in there because they are a tropical plant. They like that humidity. They don't want to be sopping wet though. And that's why I wanted to make sure that that soil wasn't like dripping, but that, that humidity is going to hold in there especially if you set this in the sun. That's the other thing you need to do. You need to put this in a sunny location. So all the days are gonna be over 70 degrees. So when it is, I'm gonna bring it outside. I'm gonna place it in the sun. The sun's gonna heat this up almost like a greenhouse and it's gonna keep it nice and artificially warm. And then at night, I can bring that back in, into my house where I keep it 75 degrees. If we have a day, especially um, that at night that dips low, that's fine because I'm bringing it inside. Now, if you are not in Texas and you still are getting cold temperatures and you want to start these, you want to start these maybe six weeks to two months before you want to plant them out because they can take a while to sprout those slips. You want to get them out as soon as you can. Once fall rolls around, I mean, you want to have them have as much time to grow and get those roots developed and you know, grow the tubers until the frost hits again and kills them back. If you live in a cooler climate, 
uh, you can still do this. You just gotta start them inside. So I just wanna show you today is March 1st. So that way we can keep track of this and how long this takes. If you keep it in a window, don't just forget about this. Every single day you wanna come in and crack this and let a little bit of air in and then close it back up. And what that's gonna do is keep this from molding in there. Okay, you do want fresh air in it, but you wanna keep it, you can see if we're already getting water droplets, this is kind of fogging up. You want that, um, that's what you want. So, but once a day, crack that lid. I went to go cook a sweet potato and I saw that this is starting to sprout. So I'm gonna put that in with these. This is a regular kind from the store. This is like that, you know, the, the normal orange flesh one. It's not like these, these are purple. So we'll just stick that in, here we go. All right guys, so as you can see, I've got quite a few leaves starting to grow out of the sweet potato. That's all from one. This one hasn't sprouted anything yet, but this one has, it just started. You can see those leaves there are coming from that one and this, these leaves here. So soon I'll be able to plant this, but for now I'm gonna focus on this one. What you're gonna wanna do is, you're gonna wanna fill up a, a large, pot so this is a 20 gallon and I actually put mulch on top as well because you really want to keep these moist especially for the first week or two until those roots sprout so I have two of them because I'm gonna plant two pots of this orange sweet potato and then probably in another two weeks once I get large enough sprouts from this one I can then pull those off and plant another large pot. You could just plant straight into the pot if you keep it moist. And that's what I'm gonna end up doing. However, it is bright and sunny today. It was really cloudy this morning and I thought it was gonna stay cloudy, but it just turned bright and sunny. There's not a, there's not a cloud in the so sky. And what can happen is when these are trying to send off its roots, the sun can damage the leaves and then keep it from growing really well. So you wanna plant at night or on a day that is kind of overcast, but we're not gonna get too many of those days. Uh, we are kind of coming deep into the spring here, almost into summer, and it's been pretty warm every single day. I've come in here and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. I've got a glass of water here and let's take a look. So right here, as you guys can see, we've got quite a few different runners coming off okay and these you can hopefully you can see i'm not sure you can see on the camera but we've got little roots coming off of each one of these so i'm going to cut this one off at the base there we go and look at that root so that root was starting already then if you look each one of these spots which has a a leaf has the ability to grow new roots. You can see two roots coming out of this one here. You can see roots trying to come out of these. And so you could technically cut these off at each one of these, and this would be your new plant. And then that would be your new plant. I'm gonna leave two of them per, just to ensure. So I've got one, two, we'll cut that like that. So now there is one and I can plant that in the dirt and that's gonna sprout for me then we're gonna have we're gonna have two there we're gonna have two here and two there and then this one we can plant just like that all right so what you would normally do is just go ahead and plant this right in the dirt. In fact, a lot of people say you wanna keep it in water for like a week or two, and that's the common way, but you can put it straight in the dirt, that's fine. You just wanna make sure that these root nubs here are in the ground. To keep these moist, we're gonna stick them right in the water for now. One, two, three, four. And that's enough for one pot. So in a 20 gallon here, I'm gonna put four. I might end up just doing three, but three to four of these so if you had like a 10 gallon you would want to go with just one maybe two we'll cut this off like that there's one now you could wait a week or two if you wanted to just make sure that you change out the water every two to three days so it doesn't rot but you could end up waiting and like wait a week or two until these roots really sprout so that's one one way 
uh, and that that works. But I think uh, planting directly in the in the pot and then just making sure I water every day and keeping it moist is gonna end up kickstarting these a little faster. They'll get nutrients. They'll just be overall quicker, and I'll get bigger healthier plants, I think. All right, it is evening now. Sun is still out, but it is almost setting. So now is the time. Let's go ahead and uh, make four spots, four little holes. We're gonna pull back the mulch here. I'll pull back the mulch here. So these we do not want to dry out, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna water those holes we're also gonna water this one because we're gonna plant in that one as well. And that'll keep it a little bit moist and of course then we'll heavily water after. And we're gonna plant that root right in the ground. Like so. Super simple guys. We'll replace some mulch around it. All right, so these two leaves are doing really good. This one is not. And that's probably because this one thinks this part is dying because I cut it off right there. We still have two nodes here so we can just let's let's pull off that leaf and we're going to plant it just like so with this whole thing down and then we'll get some roots coming off of each one of these sections right in the ground make sure we got dirt around it first and then we can put the mulch on top so the dirt's all the way around let's add mulch back on top to hold it We've got one extra here that we didn't need. So I'm gonna place that right in the water. I plan on leaving these here for now. In the hot sun in the late afternoon, this will be shaded. So it'll kind of make them a little healthier in the first, first little bit. Now, one thing I wanna mention, I didn't add any fertilizer. Too much fertilizer for these can cause them to not grow a whole lot of tubers. And, and this potting mix has compost in it. Uh, so it's got some organic material in there that's going to feed these so they already have some nutrients in there But you really almost want to kind of water them and then forget about them. All right. Well look guys I've got some new growth here. This is all new growth this leaf and then from that point up is all new This was old this is all doing really well. Not all of them have sent out new growth yet Excuse my rooster, but definitely they all have roots growing you can tug on this and they're in solid um, there's just no movement. You can see, even see there the roots right there. So they're, they're all rooted. And it has been about two weeks since I started these slips in the ground. And I did that directly, as you guys saw. You don't have to do the whole in a cup of water method. Now these here weren't doing as well, but I finally, you can see the brand new growth coming up through this. Some of these started to die back a little bit, but we've got brand new growth from each of these. So... They're taking off now, finally. This is a new leaf. Now this other one, I haven't cut back the slips yet. I'm waiting for that one. And I do have another pot ready to put them in right here. So once they get big enough, I'm gonna cut those off and I'll, I'll put them in. But um, I ripped up this one because it was starting to die back, pulled out the slips, and then I tossed the, the potato. But when I pulled it up, it had a little mini sweet potato in it <laughs> already starting. So that's pretty funny. Now I've got a couple months until this will fill up. In fact, I'm going to let this grow all summer here. We've got a long growing season and once it gets close to, I would say mid fall, once the temperatures start to drop, then I'll go ahead and rip this up. So we've got a little bit of time, but these are really low maintenance guys. They don't require, but really it's best not to even fertilize them. Um, they require very little, if any. Okay. So if you add a lot of nitrogen, it's going to focus its growth on vegetation rather than growing the tubers. Okay. So maybe in the beginning, a little bit of fertilizer, but afterwards you can add stuff like phosphorus or, pot or potassium, but really in reality, uh, they can grow without much and then they will focus on the tubers. Having a big pot like this, 20 gallon gives you quite a bit of growth in there so it'll grow quite a bit of tubers at least that's the plan and as you guys can see even just starting we already have a tuber starting right there so if i wouldn't have ripped that out of the ground that would have turned into a big old sweet potato okay so it's quick guys it doesn't take long but hopefully over the next couple months we get a lot of root development and a lot of tubers growing in there and i'll bring you guys back for that in a couple months and you guys can see that video and what i love about these is they are really kind of a set in and forget it as long as you keep them relatively watered so just come over 
I would say now at this point, now that they're sprouting, I've got good root development about twice a week. They like hot, humid environments, so put them in the sun, keep them in the sun. Um, they like that, they like the sun, and, uh, and they will grow for you really well. Plus, not just the root, unlike potatoes, okay, you can't regular potatoes you cannot eat the foliage because that is poisonous on regular potatoes but these are not these are edible they taste like spinach more uh, close not exact but you could definitely use them in in stir fries and stuff if you wanted some leafy greens over the summer and there's just a all-around really versatile plant uh, again you can eat the greens and then of course then you've got tubers that you can eat that just taste amazing super sweet so well i hope this was informative to you guys and give it a try I, I really encourage you to this is not hard at all to do this is going to save a lot of money and they're super easy to do so get whatever variety you want just let it sit on your counter over the winter and hopefully by spring you'll you'll see a little bit of sprouts coming off of them really easy so i hope this was informative to you guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you guys like this kind of content please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates also if you guys could hit the like button it would really help me and the channel out i will see you guys on the next video now you try to escape the daily grind